quality is that when they divide, each new cell can either become a stem cell or any other type of cell with a more specialized function. The important characteristics is that they have a possibility to repair and regenerate, which we've not seen in medicine as yet. We have a lot of opportunities. That is because they are unspecialized cells renewing themselves through cell division, sometimes after long periods of inactivity. And they can get induced. And the most important quality or characteristic they have is that they can home into the area which is damaged and therefore repair and regenerate. They are found in plants and humans, as I've already mentioned, and in the human beings, it's found in many organs and tissues. And the bone marrow transplant is one of the biggest examples of stem cells that has been in practice for the longest time. We'll go into the historical features later. Um, stem cells can be allergenic or autologous. Allergenic means when you take someone else's stem cells, match it. So there's a donor and there's a recipient. The donor's stem cells are matched and it is given to the um, patient or to the other person. Autologous means of the own body. So that means like someone's bone marrow has, um, you know, has been taken, we process it and then you can give it back to the same person. The advantage here is that uh, you cannot, um, there's no need to cross match or anything like that. For the purpose of today's discussion, it will, I'll be talking mostly on stem cells of human origin. There are various types of stem cells. They're usually based on their um, origin, like adult stem cells means it's taken from the adult tissue, like fat, dental tissue, bone marrow, blood, anything. Fetal stem cells are, uh, as the name suggests, taken and uh, derived from an aborted fetus. Embryonic stem cells are cells which are derived from a fertilized egg or at various stages. And nowadays we have a kind of an adult stem cell, which is the induced pluripotent stem cells, which is an adult cell taken through the lab and then brought back into its embryonic stage so that this could help later on with diseases. As I already mentioned, adult stem cells are multipotent cells. They have the ability to regenerate into many types of the stem cells, like red blood cells, liver cells, and there are others that they cannot generate, like neurons. If you want to go into the allogenic part with the adult stem cells, you really have to cross match these cells to the recipient. Fetal stem cells are derived from aborted fetus at 16 weeks. And again, they have to be um, cross-matched. They're multipotent. Embryonic stem cells are derived from the inner cell mass of a blastocyst conventionally. But we have other sources of embryonic stem cells like the marula or the blastomere and now the premarula. These cells are actually they have the maximum ability to generate into all cell types of the body. That means they're pluripotent. IPS, I've already explained. The drawback with this technology is that it's very expensive for each patient and time consuming. Almost $500,000 to $1 million to prepare these stem cells for one patient over a period of six to nine months. But however, it holds the most promise and there is a lot of grants that are being given for this kind of studies. So in the hierarchy of stem cells, the, the pluripotent stem cells, that is the embryonic stem cells, is the one that we all as medicine, medical people would like to deal with. So basically, how do they work? They repair, they regenerate, they home in, and they differentiate. So if there is a tissue that is damaged, they will go into, the, uh, into that tissue, it'll start repairing. After repair, if there is a little bit left, they will regenerate. They regenerate and repair and because they are, have the ability to home in. And when they go to that site, they become that tissue. 
So they're able to differentiate and differentiate without any uh, exponential growth. And the potential uses of stem cells are many. The promise is huge. You can treat the currently incurable and terminal conditions like stroke, traumatic brain injuries, learning defects, Alzheimer's, cerebral palsy, um, muscular dystrophies, ALS, any neurodegenerative disorders. And you can also use it for simpler things like, um, you know, for your hair or if you want to look younger and things like that. So the history and evolution, I'm not going to go into all this, but um, the term stem cell was coined in 1908. And by 1998, James Thompson from the University of Wisconsin isolated the embryonic stem cells and he developed the first embryonic stem cell line. By in 1999, in India, we had established an embryonic cell line which was xenofree, that means without any animal products and clinical grade. That means we could transplant it to patients. This 1999 technology is patented and published and patented in more than 80 countries. For the purpose, I'm going to narrow down this entire thing to human embryonic stem cells. The evolution of embryonic stem cells um, right now, we are dealing with a xenofree, that means without any animal products in the culture. But however, when these stem cells were uh, coined in 1998 and James Thompson came out and, um, you know, talked about his stem cells, he was using mouse feeder cells. And um, they, from then on, people had tried to get on and, you know, they understood that the xenofree environment was very important so that there would be no interchange of sugars and proteins, etc. And they also, um, it was also very important that through the evolutionary process of cultures and the science of embryonic stem cells, we are now able to easily expand, store, transport, transplant these stem cells. And these stem cells now have a great long viability. Earlier, embryonic stem cells would go through, let's say, 60 to 70 passages before they had a genomic problem. Their stability would get affected. Now, in our technology, we are able to go up to greater than 6,000 passages without any problems. The storage is easy. Earlier, we needed cryobanks and things like that. Now it is simple. It's just a normal, um, you know, cold storage chain that is required. So because that has become easy, it is very easily transported. And in the clinics, we have been able to transplant them very, very safely and without having any invasive roots. And the relevance and impact to our current times is enormous. Why is it enormous? Because this heralds the new age of medicine. It heralds a age, an age where today's incurable and terminal conditions would get treated. It could also help us form organs in the future. Maybe we use 3D, some brilliant mind comes across and they say, hey, we have a 3D thing, let's use the embryonic stem cells and let's create an organ and that organ can be used for transplantation and nobody should die because of the want of a kidney or a liver or anything. So the future is enormous. The applications are huge. And it is also an anti-aging because it doesn't let you, it continues to repair and regenerate. And of course, in the lab, we can screen new drugs, develop model systems, we can study our human body, the normal growth, and also identify so many different causes of birth defects. We could also treat the birth defects by giving these stem cells in utero. So the potential, the application is enormous. And this potential will only be realized as we go on, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. In the clinics, the medical application of these stem cells have been safe, effective, widely applic uh, very widely applicable. And we have seen that it has improved the quality of life 
of many of our patients. And as I mentioned, it has cured a lot of conditions. It ad addresses today's unmet needs. The stem cells are so important. So, um, you know, like um, it's something that one always wonders at that regulators around the world have started taking interest, have realized its potential. Places like Japan, US, and UK are conducting clinical trials. And once these stem cells are very easily available, the patient will continue to improve, the costs will go down. They obviously will be social effects because if the patient is healthy, the care care caregiver is not required and you know, so on and so forth. I think we've lost her. I'm just trying to get her back. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm sorry. We lost her just a little while. I know, I know. Okay. Uh, but now I lost everything. Yeah, okay. So um, we have a proprietary technology that has been patented and published in uh, scientific peer-reviewed journals. More than 50 uh, articles, papers, as well as um, 80 countries pat patenting our technology. We have demonstrated the safety and efficacy, and we transplant these stem cells into incurable and terminal conditions. And we have seen great recovery. And there is a lot of medical evidence. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we treat these kind of diseases. I don't want to talk about them. Like, you can, you can see it. Okay, I'll go. Okay, these are the diseases that we treat and what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to quickly take you through some clinical cases. You know, the reason why I do that is for everyone to understand, hey, look, this is what stem cells can do. This is the repair mechanism. This is what happens to the patient. So let's see this and then we can talk about what we need to um, what we can discuss further. So if you look at this patient, this patient's, um, this is a scan. On the left-hand side is the before treatment. And after the uh, one... We are, we are not able to hear the ma see the we can't, we can't see your screen, ma'am. You can't see our screen? No, we can't see your screen. Okay, hold on. One second, one second. Hmm. We'll have to share the screen, I guess. Yeah, I'm just doing it. Yeah. Give me a minute. Let me know if you see. Yeah, it's better now. Thank you. Perfect. So this is um, a scan, a SPECT scan. A SPECT scan okay. tells you, the SPECT scan tells you about uh, the oxygen perfusion of the brain. And... Um, if the oxygen is not properly perfused in the brain, we know that brain would get affected. And if you notice on the left-hand side, you have an area which is totally black. That black area demonstrates no oxygen. That means a brain that is not functioning. This patient is a 12-year-old, and this 12-year-old child has the perfusion area. So he could not see. And he was also cognitively challenged. After treatment, you can see that the occipital area has recovered. And the patient today is now a young adult. He's, able, he's finished his college. He reads, obviously, with his, um, you know, like near distance, um, is, that's all he can do. But he's able to function in life and he's gone to college. So this is what we had to, you can read it. 
Then you have another one. This is a brain injury. This is very interesting because the first one shows you the repairing ability. This scan tells you about the regenerative capacity of the embryonic stem cells. The black, as already mentioned, shows you that there is a perfusion defect. This perfusion defect happened in this patient because he had an accident and after the accident he was brought to the hospital his brain part had to be removed a lobectomy was done and the doctors did that to save his life but obviously with a lobectomy his clinical conditions were such that he could not you know perform any tasks or was cognitively impaired he couldn't talk he couldn't do anything and then we started treatment and if you look what happened this brain regenerated this boy is now talking waist upwards is fine he listens to commands he sings songs he talks non-stop he has improved clinically okay so this is another patient with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy a little about Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, it affects young um, male children. And we, you know, things are aware, the clinical condition starts deteriorating from three years of, of age. By nine years of age, the child is on a wheelchair, the muscle breakdown continues. And by 14, he's bedridden and the lifespan is only between 18 and 22 years of age. CPK is an enzyme. It's an enzyme that me measures the muscular breakdown. The normal CPK should not be less than, should not be more than 200. So our patient came to us and he was wheelchair bound, etc. And we took him up for treatment and today he is able to stand with support and his CPK has gone down. Another patient with diabetes, his HbA1c from 8.5 went down to 6. The diet was the same, but he is now, he was on stem cells. And today, after 2012, his Again, another spec scan, a scan of a Lyme patient. Lyme disease is a disease that is uh, caused by the bite of a tick. It affects every part of your body, the brain the most. And as you can see, the spec scan colors, black is minus five, right at the bottom. Minus four, minus three, and minus two are the colors that tell you that perfusion is not happening, is not good. And you can see the scan afterwards. When the patient came to us, this patient was bedridden, could not even move because he was in so much of pain and cognitive uh, issues and he was in fatigue and with full Lyme disease. Today, he is in Germany and he is functioning as a normal person and he's become an engineer. You know, it's very important to um, understand what, Lyme, uh, what stem cells can do because it's about the quality of life too. It's just not about... Uh, rip, you know, oh, I'm given a treatment and the patient is going to continue, etc. No, there's a quality from being in bed to becoming an engineer is a big deal. And look at this young lady. She's 12 years old. She has this genetic condition. And um, if you think that you can just pick up that skin and scrap it off, you can't because it'll start bleeding. So three months she came to me. We actually... Um, you know, we used to wrap her around with stem cell bandages and we used to give her systemic injections. And I don't need to say anything. The smile tells you all. She's a happy young lady now. Very important for osteoarthritis. On the left hand side, the before treatment, you can see the impact of the bone. The, um, there's no cartilage, uh, the synovial fluid is low, is less. And that you can make out by um, both the bones being bone on bone with no gap in between. And on the right hand side, you can see the space. And that's what tells me the patient is, has recovered. And the patient was, could not walk, was limping, had pain, and now she's fine. This is a tractography report of a spinal cord injury. This tractography report, this, what it does is it, this area here, is the area where the spinal cord has damaged. And uh, typically, 
a chronic spinal cord that means a greater than one year after injury, spinal cord injury, will does not heal. The patient is wheelchair bound, has bladder and bowel issues, cannot walk, can't do anything, and you see him on the wheelchair. After stem cells, you can see how it joined. And this patient from being wheelchair bound is able to walk, has bladder and bowel sensation and control. So having shown you some very interesting examples of what stem cell can do in the clinics, for all of you, I think it's really important to understand what's your career in stem cells. Okay, you have a lot of options, but the most important thing is you have to have that passion. You have to have that fire. I have made a career in stem cells, but I don't think of it as a career. For me, this is passion. This is life. This is all I know. And, you know, I think it's really important that young brains come together and take this field right out there. So you do have a lot of careers, but like all other careers, you have to study. You, I can, you can either do regular courses or you can do online courses or distant, like distance learning. IGNU, even online courses like Stanford and Bristol, they offer, and there are lots more. And regular courses in India, we have it in Punjab University and Manipal University. In UK, we have even Harvard and USC, you know, and they are conducting clinical trials and things like that. So there is a lot of um, uh, regular degree courses that are now available. When I started, there was nothing. And now it's wonderful to see every year, courses after courses, colleges after colleges offering stem cell as a degree course. To become a stem cell expert or to work with stem cells, you can have, you need to obviously have a bio background. And with that, you can, you can go into biotechnology, go directly into stem cells, or, you know, if you've got a medical background, you can get into regenerative medicine, developmental biology. And you can do courses like diplomas, certificates, associate degrees, and proper degrees. And of course, the medical degree. There are a lot of jobs available, and jobs are growing. It's a new field. And, um, you know, one can be in the clinics if you are a medical person. You can teach this. You can be in research. You can manufacture. You can also be a policymaker. Very soon, we'll have um, more requirements of young scientists and doctors and stem cell specialists and both private as well as the government are funding and they are also looking out for people to um, you know get in to hire and to get to help them grow this field i'm just giving an indicative salary um, and qualification required of a few of these um, people so that you understand of course these um, salaries are of 2017 and i think you know the sky is the limit as far as regenerative medicine and stem cell goes so a bioengineering researcher would get around 100000 per year with a bachelor's degree a biomedical research assistant would get 40000 with a bachelor's degree animal technician 35000 with an associate degree and a cancer researcher, 80,000 to 100,000, but they have to do a PhD. And a professor, immunology or medical or anything, would get anything from 78, I think that's a little low, to anything because you know it depends on their expertise. As I've mentioned, these stem cells hold a promise, and it is the future. And um, Stem cells as, you know, is the holy grail of medicine. Soon, the promise is that we will not have any, any person who is debilitated, who is suffering. And, you know, a day will come when, like a vaccine, stems or like insulin, stem cells can be made available all across pharmacies in the world. And that would itself need a lot of young people, create a lot of job opportunities, let the careers, you know, move forward. This is the future. The future definitely belongs to stem cells and to you all. And I'm actually kept this um, 
uh, talk a little, you know, short so that, you know, I could answer questions and have a one on one with everyone because that's so much easier. And it's nicer to talk to everyone. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Ma'am, like if we join Manipal, mm -hmm. what course to take? Uh, okay, I, um, I won't be able to give you an exact course, but you should look into stem cells, regenerative medicine. Are you a doctor or a medical student? I completed my BIPC, like intermediate. Okay, so I think you'll need, <clears throat> they'll have it all on your, on their website, but they do okay. offer these kind of courses. Okay, ma'am. And ma'am, placements will be given, ma'am. Uh, placements, I'm sure whichever university you apply to, they'll be having their policies. And as a result, you know, like um, uh, they can help you. Like I have my nephew, he's actually um, gone to Johns Hopkins. And um, of course, he, he went into, uh, I think, cellular and molecular bio and helped him out to with the job etc okay hi everyone um and ma'am like a reminder everyone please um i would i would uh, really like it if you could post out your questions on the chat box instead of directly asking them so that we can basically uh filter out um you know at least have give everyone a chance so um it would be really nice uh, if, if you guys just could uh, post your questions out on the chat box and uh, we would definitely i'll be able to answer them Chat box. Yeah, thank you. Where is the chat box now? <laughs> Hold on, let me. Do um, you see view and, options? Uh, this. Uh, one minute. So, sir, last question. Hold on. Hello, sir. Just sir, please put it on the chat box. Can... Yeah, just put it on the chat box. We'll definitely be able to answer that. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have one question. Um, so by the time you, you look for the chat box, I can just basically answer, uh, ask you the questions that have been posted up. Um, we have a, we have a, we have a question from uh, Zen who says that uh, he's from Canada and it seems like there's not much research happening there. Uh, how long do you predict until it becomes a norm internationally? Like, um, you know, people participate in research internationally. And uh, it becomes it becomes a very widely uh, researched subject. Okay, so um, basically in Canada they are doing a lot of stem cells and they're doing a lot of adult stem cells. Embryonic stem cells, which work on, is actually um, on a, in a very nascent embryonic stage, I would say, all over the world. And um, the technology we possess are is actually ready to be um, made a available to people. So it depends, you know, like as soon as someone gets interested and we are able to take this to the, um, to the, you know, bigger companies, etc. Yes, it can be made easily available. But till such time, I can't say the exact number of years. Okay. So yeah, but uh, the Canada is doing a lot of work on stem cells. Right. Um, so we have we have an MBBS student here, and um, she says that she wants to pursue a career in in regenerative medicine. Um, so you know, what what is the career path that you would illuminate for her? Are you an MBBS, right? Yes. Have you done? She's done MBBS. Uh, so she, she asked, what what field should she go in after MBBS? Uh, she'll need to grad. Um, you know, go in straight for either doing an MSc in um, stem cells, or she can continue in the medical field, do, do immunology, do um, pathology. I don't know what her interests are. And she can do uh, become a physician and then go in for regenerative medicine. Because base, uh, you'll have to become a specialist in something first. Or you can just do a PhD, MSc, and you know, say, okay, I've got the medical knowledge and I have the scientific knowledge, so I can do this. So it's up to her which direction she wants to go because with a medical degree, 
one can do a lot of things. One can get into the science part and one can get into the medical. You're already a doctor. Right. right. Okay. So we have Hiba who says uh, she has a two part question. Firstly, um, in your opinion, what is the difference between uh, tissue culture and stem cell uh, regeneration? And secondly, is or would stem cell therapy benefit in neural regeneration? Yes. Uh, okay, let me answer the last question first. Uh, neurodegeneration, the only kind of stem cell that works on it is the embryonic stem cells because one can segregate and take out the neuronal tissue and accordingly then transplant. And we have seen in our um, clinics that we, the neurodegenerative disorders have really benefited, but there is one problem. The neurodegenerative is progressive. So in a progressive disease, you need to continuously give stem cells. It's something like, you know, when you have diabetes, you keep taking insulin to, monitor, to control your blood sugar. So for a neurodegenerative disorder to control the progression, one needs to take stem cells. And the second part is the tissue culture is, um, you know, you allow the weaker tissue and you go in the lab or the other way is that you allow a group of uh, cells to become a tissue and then you carry on the growth of that. Stem cells, clinical grade would mean a three-dimensional growth of the cells. Hello. Hello. Um, we lost you there for a minute. Hello. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, we lost you there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, so uh, there are a few students who say that. Can you hear me? Yes. So there are a few students who say that um, you know they have they don't have an MBBS degree but they have a biotechnology degree or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. um and after uh, biotechnology. Yes, of course. Biotechnology is one very robust field and um yeah, but can you run a participant sorry, so. sorry for that. Yeah, yeah stem cells, um, it's a very robust field and stem cells can be a natural progression from biotechnology. And you could, if you have done your BSc, uh, you could do your masters and then you can, uh, you know, go very naturally into stem cells. That's not even a problem. Right, right. So, so you suggest that uh, besides MBBS, uh, what else? So there's biotechnology, there's what else, what else would you suggest? Bio, that to them well? bio biotechnology, and uh, MBBS. These three people, um, okay. all science students can definitely get into stem cells. But if you don't have bio, it's going to be really tough. You know, if you're just going to have physics, chemistry, and math, then it's going to be really tough to do stem cells. Okay. Okay. I'm just uh, sorry. I'm sorry for that. I there's there's a few participants who are unmuted themselves. Okay. Um. So hold on. Yeah. So microbiology also counts as a bio field, right? So yes, um. Yes, like seen, so how long do you think um is the course to do? I mean, um, you know, how long? Just like a normal PhD would that be? One year? Um. No. It depends where you are. Now, if you are in India, I can say that, you know, we have the bachelor's three years, master's two years, PhD three to four years, maybe two years also sometimes. But if you're in the US, then you have your four years bachelor's, one 18 months master's or two years master's, then PhD is around four to six years. So it depends how much you want to study. And in the US, you have things like certificate courses or the associate courses, you know, so um, it depends where you are. It's how your country, you know, um, structures their education process. 
Right. So um, there's Arlene who says, are there any hurdles faced due to governmental policies in the applications of stem cell treatments currently? Um, this is where, where is, um, which area of the world is she talking about? <laughs> uh, no, she hasn't stated that. Okay, see, typically what's happening is that stem cells being such a new field, um, regulation, regulators are also trying to uh, promote and understand the field together. So while they understand the field, the US has come up earlier, you know, they did not give federal funding to embryonic stem cells, etc. But as of right now, they have come up with um, 21st Centuries Act. They have tried to understand how these stem cells can be, you know, um, regulated. Japan went a step forward. They said, okay, stem cells is something that we'll give you the license. You prove the safety and efficacy. We'll give you the marketing license. Countries like India, we have just in the month of March, uh, the drug controller government of India coming out with uh, new rules to the Drug Act and Clinical Trials Act. And that says that stem cell derived product is going to be a new drug. So that became a little difficult. They are trying to understand what is happening. So this, this is an ongoing process, I think, in every country. And uh, stem cells is marching, I think, ahead than the rest. Hello? I'm sorry. Um, so, the case studies that you mentioned in the presentation, for example, the one uh, with, with the brain surgery, surgery after the accident, what was the approximate cost of the treatment? Was it experimental? And what was, you know, so, I mean, um, you know, like, how, how, how um, you know, effective uh, would that be, you know, to, to the masses? Like, how, how, how often, how, how, how easily could, could, could a normal person be able to access a self-cell treatment? Okay, see, right now, these stem cell treatments are available only in clinics like mine. And this gentleman came in after six years of having been, uh, you know, uh, totally uh, wheelchair bound and being cognitively not there. And within six months, to one, uh, like total of two years, we could manage to get the patient waked upwards, having a functional life. And the cost is around, say, three to five thousand dollars, maybe for per week. Okay. And and this includes all the medical care, the nursing care, the entire package of rehabilitation, the medicines, everything. You know, so um, it's not really very expensive in um, in these settings that new, uh, you know, like in the settings where stem cells are a new product. And I'm sure once it is going to be made available everywhere in the world, it, the cost will go down because somebody will be able to go and just buy. The doctor will write, say, okay, go and get 100 million stem cells, 10 injections. So you go and buy those 10 injections and come back. You know, that's the future. And all of you can be part of this future. Right. But ma'am, won't be, won't be there any chance of wipe up? Sorry for that. Um, Hi everyone, please please post out your questions on the chat box and I'll definitely try my best to um, ask them to the man. Uh, we usually do webinars in a certain way and uh, this, is, this has been going on for a while and uh, we, we really like it if we could basically moderate these questions so that uh, we don't have um, we don't have chaos in, in the webinar itself. Um, so yeah, so um, there's there there's a few students who ask me that, uh, who are asking that um, you know um, they've they've done their bachelor's but but it's either in dentistry or biotechnology and um, you know um, how how far of a major do you need to be to get into this field of stem cells? Um, so do you need to do you need to really. bachelor's university? See, not really. And as uh, every country and every university. Uh, they all need a science background and they will have their courses that you may have to complete before joining a stem cell. Maybe it's a degree program. If it's a certificate course, there's no problem at all. So if you have a scientific background, then it's okay. You can join. And so which, which, which universities in India especially offer this course? I think Punjab University is doing really well. Manipal is offering. Okay. 
So you mentioned homing as um, um, as part of the webinar. Um, I, I, mean, I really didn't understand what exactly homing exactly meant. So basically, what happens is uh, with stem cell, one thinks, oh, okay, I have a spinal cord. Let, no, let's take a, I have a brain injury. Right. And now the doctor has to open my brain and put the stem cells there. Okay, because the stem cells have to grow into that brain. But that's not true. It's like taking a crocin tablet or a brufen tablet for a headache. You ingest it orally, but it goes and, you know, controls that headache, right? So these stem cells, when you give it intramuscular or intravenous, then it can go in, home in, it gets attracted to that area of damage, and then it starts repairing that place. So it becomes really non-invasive. Right. So, um, take for example, diseases like uh, osteoarthritis, um, treatment using um, stem cells, would that become an alternative to knee replacement operations, for example? Yes, it could be. But uh, it depends clinically. If you are really, really bone on bone, then we would advise you to do surgery. But if you do have a little bit of synovitis, like that, then we can do it. So it could be an, uh, uh, an alternative. Right. Ma'am? Uh, hold on. Once again, please, please do not unmute yourself. Um, okay, I think uh, I think I've answered. I've asked most of the questions here uh, that um, that are relevant. Um, again, uh, just wanted to. Uh, I have I have tons of tons of questions for biotechnology because uh, most of the students are very keen to do bio biotechnology and. Um, uh, they just wanted to know uh, how they can go about it and you know if, if they want to do biotechnology and then jump into a field like themselves what is the uh, yeah they are actually in a very good position because they can go into the lab also you know right. they will understand the cell very well and they'll go into you know they can ex do their dna studies rna studies microarrays there are so many things that they can get into which a medical student cannot so I think biotechnology is actually really, really a uh, very good field for stem cells. Right. All right. So do you have any other um, do you have any other uh, questions, uh, everyone? Uh, uh, we can probably take a couple of more questions and then we can wrap up. Um, so yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess I've, 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 I've asked. Uh, most of the questions here. Okay. Um, should we wind up then? Okay. All right. It was really nice talking to all of you. <laughs> and thank you for such a great coordination. Thank you so much, Dr. Gita, for a, for a wonderful webinar. I think we learned quite a bit Excuse from me. that. It was, it was really nice. And um, we, uh, <laughs> it was a bit advanced at the beginning, we thought, but uh, I think, I think you, you really used that, um, you used that. Uh, beginning of the lecture to to, uh, to make sure we had a good um, good idea of how 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 career in uh, stem cells could could share. Sir, so, I need to speak uh, to Madam Prince. Uh, so can you please put your question in the chat box? Thank you. Yeah, I have put in my chat. Well, answered. I haven't got my answer, please. Okay, what's your question, sir? Hold on. It's regarding eyesight. My mother and my sister can't see. I'm sure. Um, what is the diagnosis? So the, the diagnosis that uh, is that the blood is not circulating at, at the eye. And, um, no, no, no. Medical, medical diagnosis. Yeah. I, so what's the medical diagnosis for this? Uh, a medical diagnosis because I have shown to many doctors uh, at the age of seven she can't see my, my sister don't know the uh, uh, real cure we have shown to many doctors but they are saying that their eyes is not circulating the blood is not circulating in the nerve behind the eyes we are working on a lot of uh, um, eye vision disorders 
and okay. we are able to actually uh, help our patients to regain vision mm -hmm. however it's um, i will need to see the medical records etc so you could also share my email um, id and um, I'm, i'll be i'll write back to the patient okay thank you very much you're welcome ma'am yeah uh, hold on hold on i won't be there any chance of wiping out of this future wiping out how what is wiping out? like like there won't be any chance of like this field might get low like something like that. this is the future ultimately when you know when we didn't have mobile phones i don't think you young people understand that but there was a time when we used to talk only on landline and when the phone came it was a big big mobile phone okay and now you guys all have it and i'm talking to you through a computer and i'm feeling oh my god what's happening so the future grows things grow technology grows and this is what's going to happen to stem cells stem cells right now is at the uh, big mobile stage soon it will become a smartphone so we have a huge future ahead right right thank you so much ma'am um so uh Uh, we uh, we are, we have your email id dr shah um, everyone if you uh, if you have any questions about this webinar uh, please send your uh, queries at career.esc@gmail.com and we'll try our best to get them across to uh, to dr geeta thank you so much for uh, for participating in this webinar everyone and thank you so much dr geeta for uh, for helping us uh, for helping us understand what exactly stem cells are and uh, i think it was a wonderful webinar thank you everyone and we'll wrap up now thank yeah, you so bye. much bye bye Bye.